Repeat the sound in joy. Repeat the sound in joy. Repeat, repeat the sound in joy. No more old sins. Good morning. And a very warm welcome to you to day 18 of our Advent devotionals, Repeat the Sounding Joy. Today we are just going to be considering one verse within Luke chapter 2, verse 21, and that's going to be read for us today by Anne Campbell. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Thank you very much, Anne. You know, when a baby's born, there's lots of questions we ask, isn't there? We ask if mum and baby are doing well. We ask, was it uh, a long labour? We may ask um, how heavy the baby was. Or we may ask, one of the big questions, was it a boy or girl? And one of the other big questions is, have you chosen a name? Now, that can be a big topic for debate, can't it? How maybe it's been a big topic of debate in your own household. I mean, there's whole books and whole websites dedicated to the subject of choosing names for babies. Uh, in Highland tradition, it was often a case that children were named after relatives. Children were named after grandparents or aunties or uncles. And maybe your name is, is one that runs in the family. Maybe your middle name has been after a particular relative. But one of the things that's normally the case is that it's the parents who choose the name for the child, isn't it? It's the parents who make that decision. Lots of people may have opinions, though if you're wise you might you know, refrain from expressing these opinions. But it's the parents who choose the name for the child. But imagine the conversation that morning in Bethlehem. It's a baby boy, wrapped in cloths, in a manger. What are you going to call him? And Mary and Joseph replying, we're going to call him Jesus. You can imagine almost the sort of confusion. Jesus, not Joseph, not, you know, after another grandparent or uncle. Just, is there a Jesus in your immediate family? Is there another Jesus that, that you're, you're naming him after? And Mary's answer would have been, no, we're not naming him after anybody in the family. We're giving him the name that we were told to give him by heaven. An angel appeared to me and told me that I was to give him the name Jesus. They might have asked, well, so the angel appeared after he was born? Mary would have said, no, the angel appeared before he was even conceived. The angel told me I was going to have a boy. I was going to give birth to a son. And I was to give him this particular name, Jesus. What God says, God does. What God promises, God comes true. What the angel said to Mary uh, nine months before has happened. It's come to fruition. And you know, names have meaning. And the name of Jesus is no different. The name Jesus, uh, in many ways, was a common name at the time. It wasn't a unique name. Uh, it was the Greek form of the Old Testament name Joshua, Yeshua, and it means God saves, Yahweh saves. Jesus' name encapsulates his mission. He has come to seek and to save the lost, and his very name proclaims who he is. His very name proclaims what he has come to do. God saves. He is God in the flesh. What does he come to do? Seek and to save the lost. Jesus' name proclaims his identity and his mission. In his book, The City of God, uh, Augustine, who lived a long, long time ago, let me check my dates here, the 5th century, he catalogues, it must be said, at some length, uh, the miseries of living as sinners in a world under the power of sin. Now, I know that you're probably thinking, well, I'm not going to rush out and buy the City of God and read that if that's the way you're describing it. Well, um, he does also deal at great length with God's kindnesses as well. But Augustine in his book says this. He says, there is no other escape from this life other than through the grace of Christ, our Saviour. And what he saves us from most of all is a life after this one most miserable of all. What he's saying, Augustine is saying is, this life is not all there is. 
And this life is hard. It's, we li we're broken people living in a broken world and that is difficult. We all long for a better society and a better world and a perfect world. Deep down, that's, that's what we're seeking to try to build. But ultimately, we cannot build it. But there is a perfect world coming when Jesus comes back. He's saying also that this life is not all there is. After we die, it's die death is not the end. We continue to exist. Either in the presence of God or cut off from the presence of God. In paradise or in torment. What hope do we have? Who will save us from the brokenness in our hearts and the brokenness in this world? Who will redeem this broken creation? And the answer is Jesus. God saves. God rescues. God himself has come to save. God has not come to bring our best life now. But he's come to set us free. And he's come to deliver us from our sins. And he's come to give us hope that the best is yet to come. If we will put our trust in Jesus, the best is yet to come. He will wipe every tear from our eyes. And we will be saved. And we will live in the perfect world with him forever. What do we have to do? We have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and we shall be saved. His very name proclaims who he is and what he's come to do. And I know that for us as believers, the very name of Jesus is sweet in our ears. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for Jesus, the name above all names, the one who has come to rescue and to save. The Bible says that he was the stone that the builders rejected, but to us he is precious. He has become the cornerstone. So we thank you, Lord, today for the grace that we have to be able to say that Jesus is precious. We love him. And we pray for the, anyone, maybe even watching this this morning, Lord, who's, who's just seeking, who is um, intrigued by Jesus, who is looking perhaps just for hope and for help. Pray, Lord, that you would lead them to see the sufficiency of your Son, that he has come to seek and to save the lost. Bless us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. We pray that God will bless you and we hope you can join us again.